Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Welcome to my new house. So the house has some interesting features, shall we say. What we've got to do first is get the electric sorted before I can show you the fish room, which is going to be in the garage just down there. Um, I'll take you in and show what it looks like. So if you've been subscribed for a while, you'll know my old fish room is a lot smaller than this. Uh, but basically I had an already reduced garage. I had a third of it for my fish room. And now we've got a whole double garage. So we've got a whole double garage here. I'm not going to take all of it for the fish room. Um, I do need to have some storage, so I'm probably going to split it in half. Uh, maybe straight down the middle and have a build a room here um, and then fill it with these kind of big dug racks that I've got one set up just to move some of the fish in but we need to get electric sorted because currently it only got one plug socket and it looks a bit dodgy to me so we've got an electrician coming later in the week um, who's hopefully going to all the electrics are in this corner who's hopefully going to sort the electrics out put me in a bunch of sockets over here and then I can clear everything out onto this side and this will be my fish room. Um, the garage door is going to be changed into proper opening one so as I can just walk in and out a lot easier. Um, but yes, more to come, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see some of that. The first tank we're going to get set up is in here. So this is the front door. So this tank in the hallway um, is where this is going to be set up at least temporarily, but probably forever. Um, I'm just going to get it set up quickly so as I can get my fish moved back from the room that they're boarding at at the moment. Still packaging everywhere, everything's all over the place. But I need to build this tank back up, so we're going to have a look at doing that. Right, full disclosure, it's been a couple of days. When I came to start setting things up, I realised I didn't have a lot of the pipe work because that was in the storage unit. So we had the tank, but not the bits that make the tank run. So I've been around and collected all the various bits I've got. So these are the Ultra Reef Overflows. Um, talked about them before. They're great. They save a lot of space in the tank. It means you don't have to have a weir. Increases your usable water volume, all that good stuff. But let me get all the pipe work installed, the sump up and running. Not up and running, the sump at least ready to run. And then we'll talk about scaping. That took way longer than it should have done, but all the pipe work's installed now. I've got the doors off at the moment because I thought it might show you a little bit better how everything's meant to work. Um, but yeah, we'll show you, show you how it should work. So, I had a little bit of trouble getting everything level, but we're all good to go now. Um, so at the main tank up here, we've got the return up there and we've got the two overflows there. So the main overflows on the right and then the backup overflow on the left. They follow down to these pipes. Um, so this is the main pipe and this is how I control the return. So when they talk about balancing your sump, this is basically what it means, just to make the water level sit right in the main tank and make sure the flow rate's exactly what you want. And the reason you've got two is in case something blocks that first one, the other one will take over and it doesn't flood anything. And then we flow through these chambers, goes down, up, over, down, up, over. These are the baffles, all the way through to the end where we've got the return pump. And then that goes up through here. This, I've got a valve on here, so as if I want to turn off the return but keep the water moving, I can send water that way. There is a pipe that I've just not attached yet. All the way over there, and then it'll just keep circulating there. But under normal circumstances, that goes up to that return there, and then back to the tank, and then all over again. So the way I normally have this set up is I have all my sponges and floss in that chamber and that chamber, then it moves on to the, the biomedia. So I have mechanical, biological, and then if I have any carbon or any... I uh, can't remember the name of it now, the antiphosphorus stuff that I used for a while. Um, whatever it was. I'll put a link. <laughs> I can't remember. That then goes in there. I normally have my CO2 reactor in there, my heaters, any equipment that I want to get in there. I normally have a auto top-off tank over there, but I'm going to run it a little bit different. I've moved my CO2 tank into this space. So that will sit in there quite nicely. And then 
we should be good to go. So I'm going to fill this up with the media. Start on a very basic scape. I have a couple of ideas of what I want to do, but this room that this is in, this is in the hallway. Uh, and it's got a carpet which is a little bit grotty, so we'll be replacing that at some point. So no doubt I'll be tearing this down. So I just want a nice simple scape. I have a couple of ideas in mind. Um, so it's when I tear it down to replace this floor, get a decent floor in here, we can do it again. All nice and fancy. So that's what I've come up with so far, playing around with it for a while. Kind of central island with a central piece of wood in the middle coming up. Um, it doesn't quite get to the top, it's, you just can't see from this angle, but it has some quite interesting holes and swim throughs and stuff like that. And a couple of spidery bits creeping out from the side. I've got some smaller pieces here I'm going to smash up to just make some smaller bits and bobs. God, oh, reflection is terrible. I need to sort that out. But yeah, the bit of wood I think is quite, works quite well. Nice and simple, it does look a bit unnatural and manufactured at the moment. Um, but like I say, it's probably just going to be temporary. In terms of substrate, I've got the old substrate from this tank, or I've kept the eco-complete eco from the old tank. I'm going to mix that with some gravel, have that as a base layer. And in here, these pockets, I'm going to build them up a bit higher just to raise everything up a bit. That will be where the main planting's done and then cap everything with sand. Just going to use plain old play sand, good old Argos, 15 kilos for a fibre or something like that. Uh, and then that'll be, that'll be kind of it. I have got some plants, I'm not sure how well they've survived because they've been sat in a tank with very little water, all cling filmed up to keep them moist. Um, but <laughs> they're right at the back of the garage and I can't even get to them at the moment. So planting will be another video, but we'll get it at least ready for planting, shall we say. So this is my substrate mix. It's kind of 50% new gravel, 50% old tank gravel. There's Eco Complete, other gravels, other planted substrates in there. It's full of nutrients. It's something I've done before a few times and it's worked out quite well. So so you no know reason why it shouldn't work this time. I'm just going to get that trowel and then mostly fill in here and round the front of here because that's where I'll be doing the majority of the planting. I'll cap it all with sand and then the rest will just be sand, as it would be. And we'll see how we get on. Kinda aiming for a couple of inches of this. Give a good solid base for any roots. wondering why I'm shoveling this in after putting down the rocks in the wood. It's because I couldn't find the substrate. Uh, I thought I was just going to leave the rocks in the wood with sand but I found it at the last moment. So normally I'd put down the bed first and put the things into it but this will work just as well. So that's phase one done with all the the muck. That should give a good source of nutrients and a base for the roots to grab onto. I mean, bear in mind, I'm not an expert here. This is just what I have done before or have tried and has worked-ish. If you want some real aquatic horticultural advice, go and follow someone like Bentley Pascoe or George Farmer or any of the other guys that actually know what they're talking about. Next, sand. We're going to cover all this up with sand and in there, and then we're going to put some of these smaller rocks dot it around to kind of break it up a little bit and I think we'll call it a day there oh, you can let me know what you think it looks like I'm going to use play sand this is just regular washed play sand from Argos um, I know lots of people always go on about washing play sand forever I don't, I never have I've always just put it straight in it's never given me any problems it's never been that dusty so here we go hopefully that won't prove me wrong this time but we'll get it in. So this is what we've got, 15 kilos of play sand from Argos. I'm sure there's an Argos in every country in the world, but if you're in America, maybe not. I don't know what you call Argos, a catalogue store, I guess. 
Um, like I say, just going to open it up and pour it in. I find it easiest to just dump it in and then try and spread it around afterwards. But we'll see how we get on. kilos doesn't go all that far. I should have my proper aquascaping tools with this, shouldn't I? As you can see, I'm not being very precise, but very roughly, I'm trying to get it to taper to the floor of the front. But over time, it will settle everywhere except in here behind the rocks because there's something to hold it back. So, I found a working light, so you might be able to see it a little bit better now. I'm kind of happy with the shapes. I'm a bit worried that the sand is the same colour as the dragon rock. Um, so I've kind of dotted, found a few accent pieces here and there, just to kind of break it up a little bit. I quite like the different looks from the different angles. But I think we're going to have to fill it up just to make sure that I either love or hate the colours. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it because I can't be arsed to dig it all out again. So we'll need to make do it. And if it doesn't, the beauty is once I add in some plants, that will bring in another, another palette and that will make it look a lot better. But we're just going to do hardscape today. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see the plants and the fish when they go in. Um, but we're going to get it filled up with water, get all the equipment tested, make sure everything's doing what it should do. And then... In a couple of days we'll get the fish in. This video is taking a turn. Uh, so on the plus side, I did quite like the colour of the rocks underwater against the colour of the sand. But the bit you've just seen was water pissing all over the floor. Was what happened last night. So, it was all filling up fine. Um, we got to here. This was the water line. And everything looked fine. Looked great. I'd filled up the sump. I'd filled up to here. I went outside to turn the water off because it was getting quite late at night and I thought I'll come back tomorrow and I'll get it running. And when I came back in I noticed the slightest trickle of water there. I thought, ah, it's probably just one of the the overflows or the the refill. It's just a seal's gone or something, something along those lines because that's kind of the right height for that. So I'll drop the water level a little bit. Um, and then went away and came back five minutes later to a big pool of water there. So I don't know whether the water had pooled somewhere underneath and that was it falling out, but I just emptied the tank as fast as I could. Went to bed, came back this morning, a new pool of water. I'd emptied it down to, right down to the sand level, as much as I could get out basically. And even now, what is it? It's kind of half eleven. I've just shot back a load of water out of here that was sitting under here, still dripping. So I'm going to have to do a load of testing to see if I can find a leak, if one of the seals is gone in the actual aquarium. Or I might just come back with a sledgehammer. So I think we'll leave that video there, ending in disaster. Hey, might be good for views, who knows. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to leave it to dry out. I'm going to have to break everything down. I'm going to have to get everything out of there. Do a bit more leak testing when I've got a lot more time. Because it takes quite a long time to fill a tank that size. And see if I can find where it's leaking and do a, a reseal. Or like I say, I might just give up entirely. Throw a brick at it and move on. If you want to see which, <laughs> click that subscribe button. And maybe I'll see you next time.